sound is pretty simple. Everything you hear begins with motion. If I snap my fingers, that motion sets off a chain reaction. As my finger hits my thumb, the air molecules that are immediately in contact with my fingers are set into motion. These molecules bump into their neighbors, these neighbors bump into their neighbors, and so on, until the very last air molecule bumps into your eardrum and... We can capture sound by placing a microphone in the path of these moving air molecules. Microphones contain a diaphragm that is a part of a circuit that converts mechanical motion into electrical voltage. When air molecules bump into our microphone diaphragm, the voltage across our circuit changes. The harder the air molecules push on the microphone, the bigger our voltage is. What is absolutely remarkable here is that if we take a signal recorded from our microphone and apply it across the wires of a speaker, we hear a sound that is incredibly similar to the one we started with. And all speakers do is move in response to the voltage applied across their terminals. If a large voltage is applied, the speaker moves a larger distance. If a small voltage is applied, the speaker moves a short distance. Simply by pushing air molecules around in the same pattern as they bumped into the microphone, we can recreate the hearing experience. A simple voltage signal like this applied across a speaker can bring us our favorite music, the voice of someone we love, how is your day, or even this video. Sound can entertain, educate, make us feel happy or sad, and all of these are somehow captured in a voltage signal. Sound is one of the few ways we perceive the world around us, and in the last couple hundred years we have learned some really incredible things about sound and hearing, and developed some really cool technologies. Once we understand that we can express sounds, even really complicated sounds, as a simple voltage signal, we can begin to understand the inner workings of technologies like records, CDs, iPods, cell phones, voice recognition, Shazam, and noise cancellation. And understanding these technologies is not just interesting from an engineering perspective. Understanding how these things work provides us fascinating insight into how our mind functions as it processes the world around us. It may seem like our brains work like a microphone does. Sound travels through the air, air molecules bump into our ears, and our brain turns these motions into voltage signals. There is truth to this, but in reality, doing this is inefficient and would require way too much energy. Our ancestors would have had to eat massive amounts of food just to support their hearing systems. What we have instead is an incredibly efficient system that is full of fascinating complexity, such as feedback loops and nonlinearities. What's even more interesting is that understanding the complexity of hearing systems is not just biologically interesting, but is a key part of modern technologies. Without the understanding of how our brains hear and make sense of sounds, we wouldn't be able to effectively compress audio, and MP3s and much of digital music via the internet would not have been possible. Instead of the original iPod being a thousand songs in your pocket, it would have been more like one album in your pocket, which probably already fit. In the coming months, we'll explore the intersection of sound, music, audio, digital signal processing, perception, psychoacoustics, and machine learning. While machine learning is pretending to be a new field, much of the work done in machine learning, especially on audio signals, is informed by and only fully understood in the context of the electrical engineering and signal processing work of the last century. We'll start from here, cover lots of cool stuff along the way, and ultimately dive into the cutting edge of the field deep learning on audio signals. Next time we'll discuss sound and acoustics.